violence and other kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. And let's get into the video. First, a college student from Georgia is dead after an officer-involved shooting last night. This happened on the campus of the Florida Institute of Technology in Melbourne. The student is identified as 18-year-old Alhaji Sal from Riverdale. Wow. So we got a dude from Riverdale, basically Atlanta, killed by officers in Florida. So everywhere he was, everywhere he was going, he was on that hot stuff. He was armed with a knife, assaulting other students. This is the lunacy we got going on in the community. I remember one time I did this video on this guy and he got geeked up off of shrooms and just ended up shooting this white dude in front of his kid and a woman and was like dancing over the body. Like these dudes is insane. Authorities say he was armed with a knife and assaulting students. City and campus police say when they came in contact with him inside a campus building, he launched toward them with what's described as an edged weapon. Sal was shot and died at the scene. Let's go now to our other major story this evening, a Channel 2 exclusive. This is 18-year-old Alaji So from Riverdale. He was killed in a Florida Tech dorm room last night. Police say he was threatening people there with a knife. His family telling us he was involved in the community and was an all-around good kid. So this man, he's involved in the community. He was an all-around good kid, but one day he snapped. Um, he could have got high or something. He could have, who knows, he might have taken a pill. But he snapped and, you know, the police ended up putting him down. Channel 2's Michelle Newell live in College Park tonight. Michelle, you spoke <clears throat> exclusively with his family, and amid this grief, they believe there's more to this story than what police are saying. We know so graduated from North Clayton High School. He was recently here visiting family, and as you mentioned, I did speak with them tonight. They have a lot of questions, and they're planning on seeking legal counsel. This is Alaji So an 18 year old sophomore at the Florida Institute of Technology who was studying aeronautical science and was a tutor. This is young. Wow. I mean, that ain't that ain't for the faint of heart. Aeronautical studies, whatever she said, <laughs> that is not for the faint. So that is a very rigorous um, choice of study. Looks like Buddy really did have his head on straight, but for some reason he did snap. Um, family's asking questions. They don't believe in the police, what the police said. Honestly, in this situation, if he's armed with a knife, they got evidence he's armed with a knife. And he's threatening other students. There's witnesses of st other students saying that he threatened to stab them. You kind of got to take that seriously technology who was studying aeronautical science and was a tutor. It's a young guy that's very, very <clears throat> respectable to the community. And I met this guy since the day he was born. It's a lot. He's a good friend with my son on Friday. So it, it looks like, um, you know, this was, you know, maybe a first or second generation immigrant brother, you know, not necessarily ADOS. He's more on the uh, the 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 immigrant spectrum. You know, he probably can trace his roots back to Africa without you know getting on 23andMe. Night, Melbourne police officers say they responded to reports that So was armed with a knife, assaulting students at the Florida Institute of Technology. Police say as they confronted So inside of a dorm with Florida Tech security, So lunged at police with a weapon. A Melbourne police officer and a Florida Tech security officer shot So. Police say officers attempted life-saving measures on So, but he died. The so they shot him 
and they tried to revive him, and but he passed away. Honestly, in this situation, I have no reason to deny what the police is saying. It was a security officer and a police officer. So it's not like these two are from the same precinct. Maybe they knew each other, whatever. But it looks like Buddy was out of control with the knife. And this could have been some type of, you know... His mind is overworked. He's stressed out. Aeronautical studies. He might have been flunking out of aeronautical stuff. I don't know. But it looks like he just snapped and, and it is crazy. The president of Florida Tech sent a letter to students that reads in part, My heart goes out to everyone in pain. I mourn any loss of life while I also remain steadfastly thankful for the men and women who invest their lives in protecting us. So his family and loved ones want to hire an attorney. So that's supporting what the police said, supporting the police narrative. Um, and that's the president. You know, we don't know what this dude was on. We don't know. And they told me they want justice. Everybody's shocked right now. When you say Elijah, they're like, no, it didn't happen. Up to now, still don't believe it. This is happening. I don't believe it. We lost somebody in the community. It was a future leader coming up. Before so attended Florida Tech, he worked for Clayton County Youth Services as a lead data gathering specialist for the Smart Pedestrian Program. Yeah, and this is like... It, it, it kind of reminds me of the Makai Bryant situation. We don't know how close he was to another student with a knife, but apparently he lunged at the police. It's deleting yourself by police, um, which is becoming more common nowadays. I think that he may have tried a drug and snapped. That's just my um, prediction. Maybe he tried to get high. Maybe he tried some, some you know... <laughs> some drugs and, and, and nutted up, or maybe he was just on that. Like in his mindset, he was like, you know, I'm, I'm a community activist and I'm also, you know, sometimes I like to get nutty and threaten people with a knife. A representative sent us this statement that reads in part, he was mild mannered, always willing to help others and enjoy to be around. He was a great asset to our team. And Michelle Newell now back with us live tonight. Michelle, what else have police told us about what happened there? We know the Melbourne police officer who was involved is a five-year veteran. We also know he did have an injury during the initial confrontation with So, but police won't specify what that injury is. We know there were no other injuries. As for the Florida Tech security officer, I reached out to officials. They are not releasing any additional information about him, Justin. Family will want more answers, no doubt. Thank you, Michelle. It's been a month since the 25 year old Morehouse College student was shot and killed inside a home on Joseph E. Lowry Boulevard. Tyrone Holmes's family says that the person who shot him is still on the run. Fox Dang, so Morehouse student gets taken out. Um, obviously, Morehouse is in Atlanta, and honestly, I would not, I would not suggest sending your kid to a school that is in like one of these highly um populated metropolitan areas very dangerous um for anybody uh, especially if you're a brother you probably want to get out of dodge we know that a lot of these hbcus are dangerous um georgia state is dangerous georgia tech is dangerous as well even though it's a good school it's still dangerous okay because they're connected to the heart of Atlanta. I'm not saying you go there, you're going to, you know, die. But <laughs> for me, I would rather have peace of mind. Science Janice Yu spoke with his family and has the story. Tyrone Holmes's family tells me his life was just getting started. He would have graduated from Morehouse College this month and would have been one step closer to living out his dream of helping people. It got to be a mistake. No, I was just not ready to accept that. Even at the scene with police officers and crime tape, Tyrone Bowen says he just didn't believe his 25-year-old son was dead. 
Tyrone Holmes, known as Roan, was just a couple of months shy of graduating from Morehouse College. Uh, they did allow him to be buried in his cap and gown because he was actually graduating this month. According to Atlanta police, Holmes was shot and killed at a That's that's tragic. That's tragic. Home on Joseph E. Lowry Boulevard on November 3rd. <laughs> Investigators say some kind of an argument or fight inside the home left Holmes dead and another man hurt. Police released these pictures of the suspects. A month has gone by and no one has been arrested. Dang. So these dudes are at large. They look like pretty much any other brother. <laughs> and they're coming to a son near you. To someone from us that was very dear and loved and to just do the right but do the right thing i mean if they ain't turned themselves in yet the i don't think this is the disconnect between the old heads and the young dudes these young dudes don't they take pride they take pride in catching bodies they're not about to do the right thing unless the pressure gets on them and the police start cracking down on them heavy. They take pride in catching bodies, bro. You can't do them. You can't do the right thing them to death and they just going to turn themselves in. So the old heads need to understand that if you a brother and you made it past 50, you're lucky. You're lucky. Owen says his son was smart, loved music, and was never without a smile. Holmes developed a love for helping others. He was a youth pastor in Savannah where he grew up. He planned on dedicating his life to counseling. And shout out, shout out to the, uh, you know, the, the fallen soldier, because these are the guys, even though, you know, his shirt says trap. These are the guys that potentially, you know, are, are going to work to make some improvements you know, obviously, he's probably also woke, but his heart is in the right place. It's just we got to get the mindset in and the direction in the right place as well. But unfortunately, you know, he was taken too soon. After graduating with his degree in psychology. He said, well, I have a passion to uh, be a counselor for youth and at-risk youth so I can give back to my community. And he was very passionate. Holmes' family is having a fundraiser next Saturday at a restaurant in Powder Springs. That money will go towards increasing the Crime Stopper reward for any information leading. And y'all, you know, y'all find that link. Y'all go donate to them. Show some love. To an arrest. JDSU, Fox 5 News. Brad, thank you. A woman accused of shooting and killing a DeKalb County man during the search for a missing baby got emotional after a judge denied her bond. Santana Miller and her brother Delarius Miller are both facing murder charges. Channel 2's Michael Seiden is live outside the DeKalb County Courthouse. And Michael, you learned the accused killer. Santana Miller and Delarius Miller. The names, bro. Miller is claiming self defense. That's right, Wendy. We were inside the courthouse when Santana Miller entered that courtroom. Now, she remained silent during her bond hearing, but inside the courtroom, her attorney defended her actions, claiming she felt threatened by her victim, who was also armed. My father was innocent. I don't want the murders of my father to see the outside of a prison cell. It was a moment packed with emotion. The daughter of Aziz Hassan breaking into tears as she faced her father's accused killer for the first time. Wow. So obviously this this guy, Aziz Hassan. Breaking into tears as she the daughter of Aziz Hassan. You know, probably a first generation immigrant. And the sister mistakenly accused him of kidnapping her kid when we all know that most likely the person who kidnapped her kid was probably another son person on breaking into tears as she faced her father's accused killer for the first time it happened during a bond hearing in DeKalb County Court Friday afternoon your honor all I and my family want is justice for my father 
34 year old Santana Miller and her brother Delarius Miller are both facing murder charges. Police say the siblings were part of a group of family and friends who showed up to this Clarkston apartment complex armed with guns, banging on random doors while searching for missing one year old Blaze Barnett. Right. So we did this story. We did this story. It's all coming back to me now. And she's she gets upset that she's denied bond. But you guys are out here banging on people's doors, accusing everybody. You're armed. It's 30. It's 30 brothers and sisters armed. And you expect people not to react with some type of for aggression prosecutors say Miller and or just even being annoyed the group tried to storm into Hassan's apartment even though he had nothing to do with the baby's disappearance later in the evening Hassan went down to the parking lot because he thought the group was attempting to break into his car that's when police say Santana fired those deadly shots but the defense argues she fired them in self-defense spoke with the police admitted to having a lawful firearm and firing in self-defense and the fact that she stayed and gave a, a, gave a statement um, would suggest that she's not a flight risk. After getting emotional, Santana sat in handcuffs inside the courtroom as the judge denied bond. And it was a it was a black woman who was the judge. Um, just to be clear, she denied bond. Um, it was a dark skinned sister who was a judge, light skinned sister who is being accused. So, you know, obviously the light skin privilege is not kicking in or the black privilege or, or, or what not is not kicking in um, with Shorty right here. And we should mention that that victim was also armed, but prosecutors said when police arrived, they found the gun still in his holster. Also, we should mention that. So he didn't even pull the gun. Come on. And you gonna shoot this man? Uh, Miller's brother, he's expected to be in court next, uh, excuse me, next week. We are live in DeKalb County. I'm Michael Sign, Channel 2 Action News. A Jefferson County Circuit Judge could be removed. That pending the results of an ethics trial, Tracy Todd accused of violating judicial rules for her comments and actions in a death penalty case. In 2016, Todd ruled Alabama's capital punishment law unconstitutional. She later barred prosecutors from seeking the death penalty for four murder suspects. Wow, so this woman, Tracy Todd, is, she's in Alabama, um, she's a judge, she was able to overcome all types of systematic white supremacy, racism, to get into the position of a judge, just like the last sister in the last story, and she is being put on leave for denying the death saying the death penalty is unconstitutional um we've done some stories today guys um some deserve the death penalty some don't in my opinion but obviously she's not for the death penalty she's on the rehabilitation and criminal justice reform which there needs to be reform but not in the way that you would conventionally think that trial is expected to take several days. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch a video of Miss Tracy Todd actually explaining her position. And I'm going to kind of intervene and, 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 you know, some things I'll agree with, some things I won't. But um, I just wanted you guys to hear her position, okay, and her train of thought, um, you know, and why she's saying that the death penalty is unconstitutional. Well, Judge, what what's the underlying um, cause for your for your ruling today? What what struck you most about about the Hearst motion in Florida and what happened out of the Florida case and just explain that. Well one, as I said during my ruling, um, the Hearst uh, decision by the U.S. Supreme Court was relating to the Florida capital sentencing scheme um, specifically. Um, 
since the attorneys around the state have filed motions, and particularly in this court, asking for the court to find the death penalty scheme here in Alabama unconstitutional, I had to look at whether or not it was applicable uh, relating to Hearst and everything that is available for anyone to review, law lawyers or even uh, citizens here in the state will find that the Florida, the Alabama sentencing, capital sentencing scheme is based in large part on the Florida scheme. Okay, so she's basically trying to use precedent in the Florida um, laws in Alabama, and apparently she's not she's not for that. And uh, you mentioned in in your ruling from the bench uh, several other problems you saw: partisan elections, indigent. Can can you just quickly explain some of the things that bothered you uh, and how that relates to the death penalty? Well, personally, it doesn't matter whether or not I agree with the way that we choose judges in our state, but as it relates specifically to capital punishment in this state, I had to look at the law as it relates to protecting a defendant's constitutional rights. And the constitution of our, our, our country requires that people are given a fair process implemented by fair and impartial judges. And currently the way that we select judges in this state does not comport with the constitutional requirements of the United States. Then how did you get a seat at judgeship, which from your actions, it appears that, you know, you might be out of a job soon. And you all know, and, and based on the elections that are going on right now, you can listen to judicial uh, elections and ads and campaign information and rhetoric. And in many ways, you cannot separate um, the rhetoric from that of a person running for uh, any other office. And the, the canons that guide and give us direction as to how we are to um, behave and conduct ourselves as judges clearly admonishes that sort of behavior. And in Alabama, the statistics, it's not my opinion, but the statistics clearly show that the death penalty here is being imposed at or around or near during election seasons. And it's being imposed uh, far more than states five times the size of Alabama. So. so she's basically saying they're putting too many people to death. Um, we know Texas has a um, death penalty, and, and they go pretty hard on that as well. <clears throat> a lot of people are doing, uh, and we we could do stories in Alabama. We've done stories in from Alabama um, where the shooting of a, a, a little boy, you know, there was like a, I think he was eight years old. He was playing video games. They shot him, right? A lot of these dudes in Alabama are doing crazy stuff. I don't know if you guys ever heard of uh, Honeycomb Brazy, but you know, his grandparents were shot up cuz he was a street he was a street dude. He had affiliations with the streets. Their house was shot up and the the house ended up burning down because um apparently their oxygen tanks or whatever they had, breathing tanks were hit. So their whole house went up in flames. So the things that are happening in Alabama are insane, unfathomable, and she is advocating to stop the majority of these death penalties from happening because she says it's unconstitutional that they're doing it at the rate that or at a rate that is, you know, higher than other states and in all actuality. Maybe some of these other states need to implement these too because a lot of these people do not need to be breathing the same air as we do. That in itself should, should shock everyone's conscience and it is in violation of our constitution. How about as it relates to budget? Well, budgetary concerns, we have a lot of issues here in Jefferson County and I have been trying and I have written letters to the sheriff's office. I've written letters to the county commission regarding security in these in this building. Um, because of budget cuts, we do not have enough bailiffs. Uh, we do not have enough courtroom security. The sheriff, pursuant to the law, is responsible for bringing the inmates up, taking the inmates down and securing the courtroom. That is not happening. So is she calling for funding 
more police because they need more bailiffs. <laughs> you know, a lot of these counties in multiple different states tried to follow suit with the national narrative. And I don't know if these budget cuts were because of federal funding not getting to them, whatnot, but obviously it was it probably played um, a big role in the 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 George Floyd case and you know all these protests that have been happening, you know, the the pandemic. All of these things have played a big factor in why different small counties across the nation are getting budget cuts um also with you know president biden if you're not abiding by certain mandates that people have to take you know government officials have to take then you're going to be unemployed so or you're not going to get the funding that you usually get so there's a lot of different factors that are going into why that this county specifically is not getting fundy that's more on a macro scale. And so our bailiffs have been instructed to only secure the safety of the judge, which leaves someone's grandmother who is serving on a jury open to anything that may happen if, in case of a security branch, breach. I think that is unconscionable. And I think that the people of this state deserve better. And they need to know that because the judicial branch is not being funded, the clerk's office is not operating as it should, people are being arrested unlawfully and detained unlawfully, uh, information is not being submitted to the court from the jail so that we can have hearings in a timely manner, people are being lost in the jail. I had an inmate who stopped my bailiff the uh, several months ago maybe a year ago he had been there we don't know how long but he said he didn't get a hearing no one has come down to get him dang so obviously the system is not working as it should out there in jefferson county so she might have a point i don't agree with the death penalty thing you know and maybe she's t she's you know, obviously she's taking a deeper look into it um but if they can't even get inmates to hearings, how are they implementing more death penalties than other states? That that doesn't really make sense to me. We didn't know he was there. And so when the, the legislature doesn't fund the judicial branch, it causes these sorts of constitutional violations and it causes us as judges to have to operate with nothing. We don't have law clerks here in the criminal division and we have to make a decision about life or death without anybody to help us research or anyone to help us to write our, our draft our uh, opinions and enter the proper sites as other courts do across the, the nation. And it's unfortunate, but I think Alabama deserves better and the law requires better. Well, you know what? And I'm not even mad at her for what's going on um, from what she's explaining you know, she has a fair point. If she wants to challenge the death penalty, you know, then it is what it is. She's going to have to probably go through multiple different appeals and change the laws that way. You know, if she gets fired, she's probably going to seek legal representation and, and, and you know, expose Jefferson County for what's going on in Alabama. That would be my play if I was her. Um, but I'm not even mad at that. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, I just, I, I can't get behind the, the no death penalty thing. I don't know if she wants to do no death penalty or, or less death penalty, but obviously she was looking at three other cases or four other cases, um, where she denied the death penalty and, and that's what she's being held or or being fired from or left on leave for you know not implementing those death penalty um charges um from my understanding who should decide life or death juries or judges well according to the ruling in hearst um, any punishment that is greater than what the statute requires should be decided by a jury of, of a person's peers, the community. And especially in light of the fact that Alabama is the only state um, that has partisan elections for choosing its judges that allows for a judge to override a jury's decision to give a person life instead to give them death. Um, 
it is obvious that there is arbitrary and capricious implementation of, of the death penalty statute here in Alabama. Gang violence and other kind of violence.